Here are the steps to set up a new user from start to finish. So first, it's gonna prompt you to create a new user, put in the username. I will just call this user Bob. Next, you select the language. We're gonna stick with English. And now you choose a voice. The voice is very important. You wanna make sure that the person using the device will identify with their voice. So if it's a little girl, find a little girl voice. If it's a little boy, find a little boy voice. There's a lot of choices in here that you can download and test and listen to. I am going to choose Emilio. Hello, my name is Emilio. I am more. And now when it asks you which language to use, choose Crescendo, that's gonna be the default. And as far as language, you also wanna choose Intermediate Core, that is also the default. Orientation, this is turned horizontal, which is how I like it. You can turn it the other way if you wish. And now you select a grid size. This is a big deal. You don't want to give anyone too few buttons, which will limit what they can learn. A lot of people want to start this way for smaller children, but it's not necessary unless you really think this is how they're going to learn. One of the recommended setups is six by 10, which is this and has lots of language to choose from and learn from. If you're going to go with a bigger grid, uh, maybe four by eight or five by nine it is good for your little one, but ultimately you know what is best for your child. I'm going to choose six by 10 just because it's the recommended. I don't need to include any of these right now. Later on, you might choose those, but it's not necessary. And there's our welcome screen. The next thing that you wanna do after setting up your user is decide whether or not you like the grid size that you chose. So if you're looking in here and you're playing around and you decide that there's just way too many buttons for your kiddo, there are two things that you can do about that. The first thing you can do is turn on progressive language, which will hide a whole bunch of buttons and keep out the most important ones and allow them to get used to where the buttons are without necessarily getting rid of any language. So you go into that options right there and then you're gonna go into vocabulary and then progressive language. This is a feature that you can turn on. That way you can phase in communication. So this is on step one. And as you can see, a whole bunch of buttons went away. So then your kiddo can just get used to the buttons and where they are and start doing their motor planning without necessarily having everything all over the screen. As they get comfortable, you can phase them into step two, step three, step four, etc. This is not a requirement, this is optional, but it does help some people. Other people decide that they don't like this grid at all, that it's going to be overwhelming for their child. And so you can just go ahead and change that. Go back into options. And then you wanna to go to appearance and you see default grid size, you can change that. You can play around and see what they look like. You can see, obviously, a lot of words go away whenever you go to these grids with bigger buttons. So don't limit your kiddo too much. I'm gonna choose a five by nine. And you can still use progressive language on these grids too if you want, just to help your child get used to their language. Again, that's totally optional. A lot of people say you don't need to do that, that you don't need to hide buttons but you know your child best. So it is important to go with your gut. Something else that is really important when setting it up is making sure that all the different buttons have a background color associated with them. It helps the user tell the difference between buttons easier. So go into options, go to appearance, scroll down to where it says background color. And on this color code setting where it says fringe only, Change that to all. And you can see that now different button types have different colors associated with them. You can change the intensity of those colors if you like. I like bleached. <laughs> you can also change the scheme. This is the most standard scheme that everyone uses. It's called Modified Fitzgerald. 
but you can choose from these predefined schemes or you can make a custom one if you know your child was really gonna like specific colors, you can do that too. But this helps set it up and make it more user-friendly when you start to navigate between buttons and folders.